Okay, I'm going to give you an explanation of uh, the Module 3 Racial Profiling uh, assignment. Uh, I'm going to skip over what this says here. You could just read this. Um, it's just Introduction to Race in America. Uh, with our third module, we'll investigate two contemporary policies. That's the use of uh, racial background, using someone's racial background um, as a determining factor in their treatment. So that's stop and frisk policy and then also affirmative action. So you're going to choose one or the other. Don't write about both. Okay. So all you do is you answer the question, to what degree is stop and frisk or affirmative action an appropriate slash necessary policy in today's world? Should it be used or not? Like you're just arguing the, um, you know, for or against one policy or the other. Okay. Uh, by the time this video is made, we'll have the due date, but just check, check the calendar for that. Uh, so you must write about either stop and frisk or affirmative action, not both. You need to try, choose one side to argue. Don't, you know, be halfway in the middle. Well, it's good for this, bad for that. Just choose one side or the other, okay? Um, and you're going to argue about the issue, not the article. The last paper you wrote about the article, now you're totally focused on, um, you know, the issue itself. Should the policy be used, yes or no, okay? Minimum two and a half pages. I still have students who aren't getting the two and a half pages. You're getting points marked off every time, you know. Get to two and a half pages. Cite as many sources as you need. Um, there's a minimum of three. Um, one of the articles can be one of the ones that you read for the class. The other two need to be, um, oh, it says at least one of the articles it must be one we did not read for class. Um, maybe that should read two. Two of the articles must be one we did not read for class. Yeah, good enough. All articles must be from reliable sources. I don't know what it says. See below. There's nothing below. Um, just, it needs to come from a major newspaper or magazine or organization, something like that. Um, it, this will severely um, down. You will lose a lot of points if if your art, you know, your evidence is from like blogs or something like that, um, or small magazines or just. Students like to use those because they're easier to find, you know, the arguments that you want because people just rant about whatever you want, but they're not credible sources. So it's up to you. Um, you'd be lucky to get a C if, you know, you're using those sources. So I wouldn't do it. Uh, must have a minimum of one quote per body paragraph, but don't limit yourself. If you need more, you know, feel free. Okay. Must include a work cited uh, and proper citations. There'll be major points off if you don't. Uh, MOA format, turn into Canvas. So those are the requirements. We got a lot of resources. Uh, this is just an example of MOA format, uh, how to create your work cited. We um, went over that last time, so feel free to use that one. Um, this is what your work cited should look like. Um, it also has a description of what, um, you know, uh, why the like alphabetical order and uh, you know, double spacey, like it tells you everything to do in addition to just showing you what she looks like. Um, uh, citing and quoting, we went over this today. Oh, and actually, yeah, that's right. So um, that's where to find that. And then uh, you say, they say, um, we, uh, this is one I also showed in class, but um, feel free to, to copy and paste, you know, these particular phrases. Um, these are good ways to set up your quotes, discuss quotes, talk about issues, you know. Um, you know, it's like, oh, that's plagiarism. It's not plagiarism. These are very common sayings. It's just written very professionally and it really sounds good. So, you know, feel free to use those. Um, and then if you need more sources, you can try to go here, although I don't know if you can access opposing viewpoints because they just changed that whole thing. But uh, but you should be fine with major newspapers, which shouldn't be too hard to find. Okay, so then we get to the outline. For your intro body paragraph, you really should have these three things. Introduce your topic, you know, stop and frisk or affirmative action. You should have your main argument. It should be very clear exactly what side you're arguing. And then somewhere in there, it doesn't matter if it's in the middle or at the end, you should uh, have your reasons why you are for or against the policy. Um, and those will turn into your body paragraphs. Don't put any arguments down that you're not going to talk about later. Okay. And then 
if you want to do kind of a standard body paragraph, you're going to have a topic sentence. Very important. Students just ignore this all the time, but this is the argument that you're making. What is your first reason for, um, you know, keeping or getting rid of the policy? Um, in your second body paragraph, what's the next reason that you think the policy should be kept or gotten rid of? Um, and then get to a quote so you can talk about it. This is your evidence. This is what's going to support you. Um, and then discuss it. Don't just tell me what the quote says. That should be part of it. But you should also like continue discussing it and talking about it, explaining it, go beyond just what the quote itself says. Um, if you're if you have enough, then you know stop there. If you need to do it again, do it again. Provide another quote, but don't change your argument. One argument per body paragraph, <laughs> okay, without changing your argument. Um, and same thing. Now, if you want to do a counter argument, this is a really nice way to argue is you present the other side's argument, um, give a quote from that argument, and then uh, explain the counter argument and why they believe what they believe. And then you provide your own evidence against the counter argument and then you argue against the counter argument. Make sure you provide two quotes if you're going to do this for one paragraph. Um, this, is, this can be a really nice way to argue because you have something direct to argue against. <laughs> right. Uh, and then if you have a personal narrative, you can use one here, but be really careful. Like, have you really been stopped and frisked? You know, or a parent been stopped and frisked? Um, as far as affirmative action goes, you, I mean, you're not in college. You haven't been accepted or not accepted yet. So I don't know that this works for you, maybe your brother or sister. But do you have a specific case where you know someone very specific who was let in because of their ethnicity, but your brother or sister wasn't? I don't know. The, I... Be careful with these. I don't know if you want to do that. A lot of people like to use personal narratives because it's easy. I just tell a story and I don't have to find evidence. If you're using it for that reason, that's not going to do you well. It's it's very easy to tell who's doing that. Um, so just be careful. If you are going to use a personal narrative, uh, you still need a topic sentence. What argument for or against stop and frisk or affirmative action is your narrative going to be an example of? Um, so you still need a main argument that your narrative is an example of. Then you provide your narrative and then you explain your narrative. How is um, how is this an example of your argument? How does the narrative help you argue your point? What does the narrative show that helps you argue your point? If you're going to use a personal narrative, that means you have been stopped or frisked, you know, or you know, don't just write a story about something you heard in the news, right? Um, be careful not to rant, just just tell the story, you know, you'll get it'll speak for itself if you tell it right and you need to make sure you don't just tell the story and that's it for the paragraph you need to connect it to the main argument so and in concluding paragraphs just look at the bigger picture um draw you know draw a conclusion make a prediction compare in some way other countries or you know how they do it somewhere else um go into more detail about why this is such an important issue you know, just wrap up your argument Right, but make sure you have one so people didn't include concluding paragraphs. And then, you know, once again, I'm here. You got next two weeks to bring me a draft, you know, um, and I can help you improve your paper. So let me know if you have any questions, and thanks for your time.